Welcome back to You and the Law here on AM650. I'm Sterling Fox. Lawyers Joe Murphy and Scott Stanley in studio from Murphy Batista LLP here in Vancouver. We're talking personal injuries. We've been talking about ICBC and filing claims and when to use a lawyer, when to speak to a lawyer, which is just about every instance along the way. As Scott says, you don't need to hire a lawyer, but it's really smart, just plain smart to speak to a lawyer. ICBC is an enormous, a successful corporation. You're one individual up against a pretty mighty outfit. You do need some some guidance, and that's what it's all about, isn't it, Scott? Absolutely. Uh, ICBC is one of the most well-run insurance companies I've ever run across, and they're a formidable opponent, even for us. And We're, we're good at this. Mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine um, a, a person dealing with ICBC on their own if they have a complicated case. I just makes no sense. Interesting. You identified yourself uh, uh, coming out of law school and working for many companies in the insurance industry, up to a dozen or more, and and uh, your conclusion is that uh, of that gang, ICBC is head and shoulders above the rest of them? My personal view is that of all the insurance companies I worked with intimately, ICBC is by far and away the best run of the lot. And Joe, you were saying during the break that we here in British Columbia are actually quite lucky carrying the uh, car insurance coverage that ICBC provides better than most everywhere else in North America. Sterling, I believe fervently, and I've been in this business for almost 40 years, Mm. that we have the best auto insurance system in all of North America. We have the best insured cars. We have the best benefits. And we we have an insurance company that's very well run, and it's transparent because at the end of each year, their financial statement is published, and you get to see what money came in and where it went. Whereas private companies wouldn't do that. Private companies would do a variety of things that ICBC doesn't do. And with private companies, we wouldn't have this system where we have the best insured cars and among the best benefit plan of any uh, place in Canada or North America. One of the aspects of transparency provided by ICBC is, well, their financials. And uh, a public uh, corporation uh, is required to uh, disclose its financials at the end of every year. And it, we are usually uh, at, a, at a sort of a jaw-dropping moment every year across the province when we discover the the dollars that roll through ICBC year after year after year to the tune of close to a billion some years, Scott. Oh, more than a billion. In the last uh, in the last four years, ICBC has turned over a million dollars to the government for its use. ICBC makes money. In, a in, billion, you mean? Uh, well, in May of 2010, uh, the provincial government removed 778 million from ICBC okay. for general use, and they're going to remove another 226 million in 2013. So you're right; that's over a billion. Yeah. So if anyone tells you the r- rates are too high, and it's nonsense. ICBC makes lots of money, and ICBC uses its money. They, they don't get a lot of credit for the road safety initiatives that they, they sponsor. A lot of these ads you see on TV that are directed at uh, changing behaviors, making things safe, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the big push to get uh, cell phone use uh, made unlawful, those are things that you can trace back to and thank ICBC for. Private insurance companies have no interest in this, wouldn't be doing this. I'm glad you brought up cell phones. Joe, I'm on my cell phone. I'm I'm breaking the law. Nonetheless, yes. I'm yammering away like a crazy man, and I'm not paying attention, and I hit somebody from the rear. I'm a distracted driver, yes. uh, guilty of a couple of offenses on the spot. How am I going to be treated at, uh, at claim w- when I present my case? Uh, b- because the driver of the car that I just hit, that guy, he was talking on his phone. I saw him in my rearview mirror. You'll be the responsible driver, and it didn't matter. It wouldn't matter whether you're talking on your phone, adjusting your radio, trying to tie your shoelace. Uh, you're responsible. Right. And the people that you have injured are entitled to be compensated for whatever their injuries and losses are. Okay. So it really doesn't matter to ICBC, or shouldn't matter, why you were negligent and ran into someone. But I, th- I think generally, though, cell phone usage ranks up there. It's probably more, I mean, people don't drink and drive. Uh, people now wear seatbelts. I mean, they still drink and drive, but there's been... Regrettably, but uh, the, the percentage is shrinking yeah. dramatically. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind that the most dangerous thing right now on the road is people that are using cell phones. Right. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind that that's the case. And, and the good thing with the technology, I mean, I, I know this, I've got kids, you can track them. 
I mean, they would never agree to have an electronic collar inserted in them so you can follow them around. But, <laughs> but give them a cell phone. Y- you give them an iPhone and, you know, uh, problem solved. That's right. But you can track where these phones have been and you know when they've been used. So it, it's pretty transparent when someone's used a phone in a, and they've been involved in an accident. All right. Now, how, does, how is it treated uh, if, if you're uh, the party that is uh, injured as a result of being hit by some fool talking on a cell phone blatantly breaking the law for all to see. Is that, does that add up to the damages? Does that increase the settlement because the guy was an idiot in the first place? No, it, it, it doesn't. Uh, there's now an offense under the Motor Vehicle Act, just like there's an offense for um, you know making running a red light. There's now an offense for using your cell phone. Absolutely. And that, there should have been for years. And again, I think you thank ICBC for that. Um, but no, it doesn't increase the damages. If you've got a drunk driver... Um, if there's been some egregious conduct, you might be able to get punitive damages, but those things aren't covered by ICBC insurance. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit, gentlemen, in, in the few remaining moments that we have about, well, the rubber hits the road. Let's talk money and how you people make a living because it's about contingencies. It's about percentages of uh, awards and that kind of thing. Uh, you don't charge ever for a person to sit down or maybe make a phone call and go, look, I just, I just got in an accident. What do I do? That's a, a free consultation that most lawyers w- would uh, easily uh, accommodate. But when, when, do the, when does the meter start running and how does it work, Joe? Well, Sterling, the meter starts running when the client hires us. We have a, 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 a retainer agreement. They sign it. We sign it. They have a copy. We have a copy. And it really says we get paid out of the proceeds at the end of the case. Okay. So if there so is no recovery, that. there is no legal fee. Interesting. Uh, Powerful incentive for fellows like you to do a good job. Well, exactly, because we're not going to get no paid. Awards, but, no But no. at the same uh, same time, we're not going to take uh, a case that has no merit. We're not going to take a weak case. We're not going to act for a client who um, is a phony, is exaggerating things. Right. The best thing about doing this, where insurance companies, they pay their lawyers by the hour. And they're always conscious about how many hours are being spent. The greatest thing with the contingency fee is that I don't have to go and review everything I'm doing with my client. If I want to waste my time reading a bunch of cases, they're not getting charged for that. I get to do the case and I get to put as much time in it as I think it requires. Right. You wouldn't want to go to your doctor and have and, and tell your doctor, well, I only want you to spend half the time on this very important problem. And that's what would happen if you didn't have a contingency fee. So uh, the lawyer gets to determine exactly how much time they're going to put in. And you have clients all over British Columbia. So when you uh, travel out of necessity to a person's home in Vanderhoof, you were talking about a client up there a while ago, Joe. Um, I would assume that your expenses are covered by the client, but uh, the rest of it is simply uh, part of the, the contingency fee at the end of the event, right? Well, usually, Sterling, until the end of the case, the client can't even pay the expenses. Interesting. We get the expenses back from ICBC. Oh, okay. All right. So the, the client, they're not out anything. All right. Well, this is, this these, is, these people don't have any money. Oh, I was just going to say, this is important stuff, uh, gentlemen, because the biggest fear people have about going and sitting down, even uh, approaching a lawyer, is this just going to cost me my, my arm and my leg, and all they're going to do is tell me to buzz off. Uh, it's, there's a real fear there, and there's a, a weird perception there, and we need to sort of break that down. Well, I, I think it takes a lot of courage for someone to come up to one of these big ivory towers downtown and come see come see a lawyer. But um, you know, it's, it's how the lawyer presents. It's how the lawyer makes them feel comfortable. Does the lawyer listen? Well, one of the ways that you can find out about Murphy Batista without going to the Scotia Tower at Georgia and Granville, the first visit might be to the website. Check him out on the internet at Murphy Batista. Dot com. And if you have any questions or comments based on what you've heard on You and the Law today, the address to, uh, to contact is, uh, we're talking about Scott here, so it's Stanley at MurphyBatista.com. Scott Stanley and Joe Murphy, thanks so much for coming in, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you back in the studio. Thanks, thanks for you, having Sterling. us. This is You and the Law on AM650.